before we get into today's message from Proverbs, I've got a great quote for you from John Chrysostom. God conquered the devil with the same weapons the devil used against us. A virgin, a tree, and death. These tokens of our demise have now become the tokens of our victory. That's awesome. Okay, so now we're looking at Proverbs 11 and verse 9. It says, With his mouth the godless destroys his neighbor, but through knowledge the righteous escape. Genesis tells us that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and that the earth was formless and empty, and darkness was over the face of the deep. In other words, in the beginning the world was in a state of chaos. And then God spoke, and it was his word that brought the world out of chaos and into order. So if a word can bring order out of chaos, it is possible that a word can turn order into chaos. The most powerful weapon in your arsenal is your word. You can use it to create or to destroy. Our world is a, it's dying for an encouraging word. Every opportunity you're granted to speak into someone's life, the life of a child or a family member or your wife or husband or someone you meet in business, the person who just asked if you can spare a dollar, no, you wanna give them an encouraging word. It's more important to give an encouraging word than it is to give that person a dollar. Give them a word that will help them order their world. Children are desperate for approval. They thrive in an atmosphere of encouragement. But adults are not that different. You are drawn to a positive word like a moth is drawn to a flame. Of course, it's got to be a truthful word. Otherwise, it will have no potential to order your world. It must have light, it must have the light of truth. The proverb is telling us that we have a responsibility to speak an encouraging word to our neighbor. According to the parable of the Good Samaritan, Jesus defines our neighbor as someone who God places into our hands. Think of your neighbor who's someone whose life is in your hands. You can care for them and lift them up, or you can bring them down. We, br we lift them up or we bring them down primarily through what we say. It says, with his mouth, the godless destroys his neighbor. How do you speak to people? How do you speak to your husband or to your wife or your children? How do you speak to people who are beneath you in social status. You can destroy someone with a harsh word. We have no idea what they've been going through and a thoughtless, flippant, careless comment may be enough to send them over the edge and into chaos. The godless will go even further than mere thoughtlessness. They'll deliberately calculate a plan intent on ruin, ruining somebody's reputation because they know that a man's reputation is the most valuable thing in his possession. These scandal mongers spreading poison, gossiping and slandering and mudslinging and muckraking to malign your character and ultimately to destroy you. Let's go even further. <clears throat> it was through rhetoric that Hitler rose to power and through propaganda that he persuaded Germany concerning the supremacy of the Aryan race and the inferiority of the Jews. Watch out for the godless. Anyone not living in the fear of God has all of that potential for mass destruction. Nevertheless, we're told that through knowledge, the righteous escape. Knowledge is power. God lamented, my people are destroyed for lack 
of knowledge. Knowledge is power. The Word of God works on the basis of knowledge. If you didn't know that Jesus is your healer, then you'd stay sick. If you didn't know God's name is Jehovah Jireh, my provider, then you'll remain poor. If you don't know help is in the name of the Lord, then the snare would not be broken. If you never knew that Jesus was your savior, you'd get hooked in a cult or some Eastern religion and all the hell that goes along with those kinds of things. If you remain ignorant of God's word, then you'll be unable to access its power. So wise up on the word of God. There'll be occasions when you'll find yourself in trouble. It may be a setup. The enemy has maliciously set up a trap designed to bring you down. If you can't quiet you, sorry, if you can quiet your emotions and listen prayerfully and attentively, God will give you a word, a word of deliverance to help you escape from the predicament that you are in a word that will help bring you out of the chaos that you found yourself in, a word that will bring you, bring your life into order. It might be a word of faith, might be a creative word or a word of wisdom, a word that gives you courage or a word of insight into the situation that you're in. God may, may tell you to go here or do this. He'll give you a word, secret knowledge, Knowledge that you would never have discovered that you, if you were not in trouble in the first place and were forced to seek the Lord for a word. Finally, there is knowledge that the Lord provides before trouble even arrives. This is either to preserve you or to prepare you so that he can bring you through it. It's knowledge or a word so that you can avoid trouble in the first place. Much of Proverbs is this preventative wisdom, avoiding the paths of the foolish or of the adulterous, keeping good boundaries, holding your tongue, taming your temper, marrying wisely. Such wisdom will deliver you from the Pandora's box of chaos that you didn't even realize was heading your way. That's how knowledge will save you. And that's the wisdom that is contained in this proverb that God has given to us today. God bless you. See you soon for more wisdom from the book of Proverbs.